So guys, unbelievable. You have to look at this. Another 5.0 just happened. I'll zoom in a little bit. And the location is interesting because it is further south, coming closer to Santorini that you see here in this area. And look at this. It's another 5.0. This time a little deeper at a depth of 10 kilometers, but it was basically announced by another 4.7, but at a different location at a shallow depth of two kilometers. So interesting. And the 4.7 is in this area where we also saw another big one yesterday. It's hard to find it, guys, because there's so many round and large circles. It's really hard. There should be a big, big, big one. That's another 5.0. I caught it on the 10th. This is crazy. There is another 3.2. So it seems they're making the circle the same for the three as they do for the fives. So that's not ideal. So that's the 4.7. That's another 4.7. So here is the current quake, another five. And it did look during the day, maybe, maybe that it would start to slow down here a little bit. It went down in the 1.9, but then three, three in the threes. Well, in between, always some higher ones, a 4.1, 4.3, 4.3, 3.9. So everything that you see in blue was basically above three in the higher ranges and the yellow stuff here as well. This is all the 11th. This is crazy. So many in a row, just minutes apart. And that's what the residents are reporting. It's a constant shaking. It doesn't give you a break, right? But now another five. So this reloads constantly. I just thought that this is incredible and uh now that we see more in the five ranges, they have definitely increased. Does that mean that we're shortly before the big one? That is the big question in the room. And whether this is really at a depth of 10 kilometers, that remains to be seen, guys, because usually they put that in as a placeholder when they don't know the exact depth yet. So it starts out at 10. It just happened, right? So it's probably at a shallower depth. And guys, although the scientists are saying we won't see a big Santorini eruption, it's not likely, you never know with volcanoes because there are ancient records and archaeological evidence that describe the Terra, that is Santorini, eruption from over 3,600 years ago, which is one of the largest volcanic events in human history. So significant. This thing can be a monster. I'm not saying that it's going to be one shortly, but we should know about this. You know, while there is no direct written, written records about it, um, from the Minoans that have survived it, there's indirect sources and even mythological accounts that suggest that this eruption was preceded by earthquakes and significant warning signs, something that we're experiencing right now. So there was seismic activity before the eruption. Geological studies confirm that, that strong earthquakes occurred before the main eruption, likely for weeks and months, for longer periods of time. And this is why, you know, this could be that these tremors have warned the Minoans, which led them to do evacuations because there is a lack of human remains in Akrotiri. That is an old Minoan uh, town that was buried in ash by this eruption. So if nobody was there, they probably evacuated because if you feel the ground shaking for such a long time, even if at that time there was no earth sciences, you know something's off. Better, better get away from that. So these tremors could have warned them. I, I really think they did. And then there's oral um, deliveries and also later written myths that mention rattling and shaking of the earth, suggesting that this was a prolonged seismic activity before the main event. There's also lots of ancient text and references that um, mention this. So in Egyptian text, 
A steal from Pharao Amose describes a great storm, darkness, and destruction in Egypt, possibly caused by this Santorini eruption. The inscription mentions the sky being in turmoil and then temples being damaged, which could be the result of the eruption's ash cloud that would reach Egypt. And then there's the biblical plagues that are associated with that. Some researchers theorize that the eruption influenced the biblical plagues of Egypt. That was darkness, water turning red, and hailstorms. Yeah, that can be caused by volcanoes. The rattling and earthquakes before the eruption might have contributed to panic and myth-making in the ancient areas in the East. So, Plato's Atlantis, we've heard about that as well. In Plato's dialogues, um, Tilmeos and uh, Critias, he describes Atlantis, an advanced civilization that sank in a single day due to earthquakes and floods. So many believe that Atlantis sank underneath Santorini. Could be a memory of the Santorini eruption, at least also passed down through oral traditions. But there's archaeological evidence. Excavations at Akrotini, that was a Minoan settlement on Santorini, show signs of pre-eruption tremors. And that's what's interesting for us because it is some evidence. So collapsed buildings before the ashfall. So you can tell when they collapsed. So that tells us they must have collapsed because of something. Earthquakes, right? So prior earthquakes to an eruption. Abandoned homes indicating evacuations before the final explosion. And sadly enough, let's say something like this was to happen at Santorini now. It would probably look the same because thankfully most of the people have evacuated. Although there's still people on the island and I don't think that is a good idea. People want, don't, you know, wanting to stay with their elderly residents, they're sleeping in cars, including the residents. So why don't you go to Athens or to the mainland if you're sleeping in a car anyways? What's the difference, right? Get off the island. Now there's still time, but we do not know how much time. And I'm talking about a strong earthquake right now, not about a gigantic super volcanic eruption. Um, pumice, pumice layers have been found beneath the main ash deposits. That means smaller eruptions happened first and then the big one came. So what's the conclusion that we can draw from this? The Santorini eruption was likely preceded by weeks or months of earthquakes shaking and rattling and making a lot of noise and it is noted in archaeological records Egyptian inscriptions and later in the so-called myth um, there are no first-hand written accounts but certainly what we hear might echo this disaster and while I was talking to you about what happened in the past, more earthquakes just happened. Look at that. After the 5.0, a 3.6, and the latest one right here is a 3.9. Again, depth 10 kilometers because they cannot define it yet. And uh, another 3.6 happened after the 5.0. So it's rumbling. It looks like we're in another spike. So will we see another five? That is going to be very, very interesting, guys. So I will keep you updated about this, guys. There's way more. I'm just working on another video where we go more in depth about what happened in 2011 with that earthquake swarm and that magma intrusion that happened there. And then we draw a line to what's happening right now if we still have time to release that video. So yeah, let's hope and pray that this current earthquake swarm is just going away without nothing bigger. Although what is concerning is just the increase from lots of force now in the five range, more fives. Will we see even more? Is this then a precursor for magnitude six? 
That's the problem. And I've made a video, what is going to happen if there's a big earthquake with the buildings, a professor that is basically a seismically structural engineer sort of thing that knows what's going to happen, where these buildings will collapse and which direction. Check this video in the end screen, guys. Leave this video a like. And if you want to support me and the channel, go to the links in the descriptions. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you and see you soon. Bye-bye.